if you want to organize you know organize economic thinking and again it's for me it's always about in the end what delivers poverty what delivers a poor country what delivers a poor population within a country and how mainstream economics deals with it i i kind of think we can probably summarize it in kind of four propositions four ways of looking at the problem you know the one is the one that most people think as economists we think about the problem like there's perfect markets just let them work everything will be efficient and then yeah we don't really think about how then poverty or um well, poverty and 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 poor outcomes to certain people follow from it you know it's probably this kind of they don't work hard enough and that's why they're poor but of course the most basic of economics and you know come back also to Amartya Sen who was always very good at alluding to this is is uh is that you know efficiency is not fair because fundamentally if the markets are perfect poverty gets created through the initial distributions of assets so we have a very simple view that all poverty is essentially um poor assets to start with you know initial condition initial endowments of course um and i think you know in my early career i i grew up with this you know this i still th- remember the beginnings of uh the mainstreaming of the kind of joe stiglitz ideas of market failures start from market failures and and that's the way of organizing it so so if if you see market failures around it and a lot of basic development economics uh tends to still be taught around that you know you just have these imperfect markets how does poverty come about well it's of course still to do with initial endowments it never never helps uh to to have a poor start but then you could have certain market failures that can make it worse and so it is kind of certain market failures can exacerbate of course the simplest one is credit market failures if i go to the bank as a poor person i won't get a loan because i don't have collateral so i have to have assets to be able to get a loan if i'm rich i can have a loan so basically i'm making the initial income distribution worse so poverty gets exacerbated by the market and i think that's important you know markets can exacerbate poverty uh, because of their inherent uh, ability to fail and and then maybe the last two is then put this more in a macro framework you know put it in a more macro growth framework it's the same ideas of market failure so it's the third proposition is that basically um growth failures low growth in in economies come about because of market failures and you know you could start with you know global credit market failures if i'm a poor country i can't easily uh borrow um or you can go to you know uh, um other nobel prize winners like um you know paul romer that it's basically uh if you have a set of high human capital to start with you keep on having the externalities or the krugman type of argument once we get growth going in a particular location there will be externalities from settling in that same location so you get all forms if you know externalities are market failures and um you know you get that same idea of market failures but actually leading to growth failures and then probably the the fourth one that goes a bit against this in some sense um is to actually say well you know maybe the problem doesn't lie in the market itself but in the underlying institutions that could allow a market to function well and then you are you know um not a nobel prize winner there on a simoglu um you know maybe worth uh, putting a bit of money on on him winning it one day uh with jim robinson get the why nations fail type of argument where he fundamentally say no is the institutions that fail that don't allow them the markets to function or don't allow really the governments to be of the kind of that can actually help to fix the market failures but it brings it back to the underlying institutions and that's that's what it does now you know these four propositions um you know i i still think you know one day i should write a longer article about it because it's quite funny if one starts thinking about it is quite a lot of nobel prizes you can fit into into that framework and uh you get a lot of fairly applied economics that and policy advice stems from all these kind of ways of doing it at the same time i do and and we can come back to that the more i think about it it's put side of the institution central and if you don't have them you're a bit screwed you know give my language but basically you know you you start with with uh bad institutions and then you can read 
uh, why nations fail. If you don't look like, if you read a book uh, in a way that it seems to be written, if you don't look like England uh, or its offshoots, places like America, um, then you are you are damned and all the other places somehow or another can't get these institutions going. Um, and so you get in the end, you know, OECD countries, they're the ones that have their institutions sorted and then the rest not. Now, if you look at the developing world, it doesn't fit very well for me in terms of, is this a sufficient explanation of why we see countries taking off and others staying behind. And I suppose that's then the premise for, for, for my book.